I think sometimes Christians think that worry is the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> that somehow if they worry about it, if they fret about it, if they get anxious about it, it's going to make it better. Really. <laughs> You know, I, I look at these little flowers, you know, they're kind of purpley and kind of yellow. I don't think they think about how to grow, whether they're going to get watered or not, whether they're going to get enough sunshine, or whether they're going to get too much wind or rain. I, I think they just grow. You know, I think they don't really think too much about it. You know what I mean? Do you think too much about it? <laughs> Have you gotten to where you're kind of like too consumed with everything going on? You know, there's an old joke about, you know, stop and smell the roses, but watch out for the thorns. But maybe there's something to be said for take a look around you. You know, have you accumulated a lot of things to worry about? Or are you learning to worry less and enjoy more? Because you see, James said that we could count it all joy when we fall into diverse trials and tribulations. He said that we could technically enjoy even the bad times and the good. Now, I don't know about you, but hey, you know, I kind of like enjoying the good times. <laughs> so, when it gets good, I like to enjoy it. Now, since I got saved, I gotta admit, my life really got all kind of all over the place, kind of confusing sometimes. But you know, there came a time in my life where, because I gave God the last part of my life, I finally said, you know, Lord, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm too old. <laughs> I've been around long enough to figure out that you're in control and I'm not. And that you can do a lot better job of running the universe than I can. So, God, every time I get all carried away, would you please send me a message to let me know that it's okay to not have it my way? <laughs> you know, to not be so wrapped up in worry, you know. I think about the all the Calypso beat, you know, like we say, we don't worry. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Be happy. Well... I'm not that way, you know. I mean, there's some things that concern me at times, but when I'm concerned, I give it to God. I say, okay, God, look, this is my this is my situation here, you know. I kind of think that this needs to be taken care of, so how about if I give it to you and you help me work that one out? So you show me the way I should go, and I'll let you lead the way, and I'll do whatever it is you want me to do. And you know, in 30 some odd years it seems to work <laughs> if it doesn't work for you don't do it figure out something else I mean I'm sure with all the religious ideas out there you could come up with something but you know I kind of like having a God that is real because then I can you know talk it over and have conversation and when I don't understand something I can kind of like discuss it you know and have this kind of you know, God, I don't get this. You know, could you explain it to me a little better? You know, could you show me what I'm missing here? What point I'm not getting? And he does. You know, and then I get it. And I go, ah, now I get it. Such a deal. Maybe I should have listened the first time. <laughs> I think that's what I like about getting older, getting wiser. You don't repeat the same mistakes over and over again as often. And finally you get to a place where you kind of go, you know, I see that coming. That, you know, kind of like, you know, hole in the ground. And I don't think I'm going to step in it this time. I think I'll walk around it, you know. I don't think I need to really go down in it quite as deep or go in it at all. I think maybe, you know, I'll avoid the potholes, you know. And start driving on some smooth pavement, you know. Start walking on some... You know, kind of like straight paths, you know, so I don't have to kind of like 
veer off to one side or the other. Now, I don't know about you, but when it gets warm, like today is, and it gets sunny, like today is, I kind of like stopping and thinking and smelling things, you know, like these tomato plants, you know. One thing's for sure, they smell like tomato plants. <laughs> There's no mistaking what a tomato plant is. It smells just like a tomato plant. My little cherry tomatoes, you know, they they seem to be growing. You know, I thought they were going to get bigger sooner. But they're still just kind of growing at their own rate. You know, I kind of was hoping they'd be like cranking along here by now, but at least they popped up and I can see them. They're green. I got four little green tomatoes. <laughs> And my big hearty tomatoes, you know, they're, they're monster trees now. They still haven't got fruit yet, but they're gonna. I got a feeling when they do, it's gonna be all over the place. <laughs> but I like that about being able to stop and look, appreciate, and think. I think sometimes we don't take the time to think, you know? We don't evaluate what we're doing. We don't stop for a few minutes to consider what it is that maybe God wants us to do or maybe God wants to show us through something that's just simple in our life. Something as simple as maybe tomato plants or these flowers or maybe even this squash behind me. You know, I think God likes to use normal everyday things to talk to us. I don't think we have to make it always so super spiritual or so super religious that we have to wait till Sunday or go to a meeting, you know, or get some kind of earbuds on and block our hearing. Always fill it full of some word, you know, or something or some music. I think sometimes we can just listen to what God has to say and enjoy Him directly. Don't you? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. It is I. Be not afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's a holy jet. Cool. Cool looking jet. It is I. Be not afraid. When thou passest through the water, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you, for I am the Lord thy God, your Savior. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Emmanuel, God, with us. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yes, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine? or nakedness, or peril, or sword? I don't think so. <laughs> when I read that, I kind of think like, me? Me? Worry? Ha! Huh. What do I got to worry about? <laughs> God's in control. I'm not. Now, if I was in control, I'd be worried. <laughs> but you know, since he's in control, I think he's doing just fine all by himself. I think God kind of likes it that way, you know, being in charge, letting us do what we're supposed to do and let God do what he's supposed to do. After all, isn't that why he's God? I think so. I think
think sometimes he just wants us to sit back. Relax. Don't do it. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Maybe for you that's hard to do. Do you know how to relax? You know. Remember summers are for kind of like not planning a barbecue and making it a lot of work to do, but just sometimes summers are about finding a grassy spot and a tree and a hat and a pair of sunglasses and sitting down and relaxing and enjoy and catching a few rays. enjoying the day the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord. I think you did a good job today, Father. I think I like today. Don't you?